Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today we're going to discuss renewing the covenant. A covenant, for the sake of this conversation, is a sacred contract. It's not a business contract. It's not a dry contract. Something that is more valuable than mere words printed on a page. That is a covenant. Something must be at stake, something bigger than us, that matters beyond the singular self. Here's an example of renewing the covenant. It's a bad example, but every good idea begins somewhere, and sometimes it's right in the middle of a human trash heap. When I first moved to Washington, D.C. from Lincoln, Nebraska, many years ago, I lucked into a job at a major local regional theater. The head director and producer of that program had a favorite phrase that confounded everyone he met. And he liked that. It was by purpose and design. This phrase was used as a cudgel to get his way. And that phrase, you must renew the covenant. And he would randomly say this to you throughout the day. Now, he'd never tell you exactly what he meant by renewing the covenant. You had to figure it out on your own. And that was always hard to do because he'd never give you any hints, which meant you'd never really figure it out. And he liked it like that. It kept him happy. And you'd be happy trying to keep him happy. He'd keep you on your toes, so he'd be happy controlling you. Well, it all quickly became a frustrating Mobius strip of non-functionalism. He could change the covenant at any time, depending on his mood and will. And there I was, a wide-eyed child of Nebraska, fresh off the farm, trying to figure out how to renew this covenant thing. And sometimes I'd say, look, just tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it. No. Renew the covenant. Well, I quickly got up and moved to New York City and never looked back at the basin or that particular covenant. I did like this idea of renewing the covenant. The phrase had meaning for me, even though I didn't know what it meant to this other guy. So I always kept the phrase privately in the back of my mind, I've never used it on anyone else, to remind me to keep renewing this something special, this something human, this covenant with other people. And I do that mainly by remembering them, thinking of them, understanding what they value and what I value. In this podcast, this human meme podcast, we've discussed my mentor Howard Stein many times before. He was my professor at Columbia University in the city of New York. That's the official title of the school, by the way, because many people think Columbia University is the school in Missouri. So the New York City version always adds every piece of documentation you get from them in the city of New York. Howard Stein died at 91. He had a rich and wonderful life. And he had a favorite phrase, especially at the end of his life, that he would often use. And it was his sort of version of renewing the covenant. He called it closing the circles. We live in circles. We're spinning new circles. A circle is the perfect form. It's functional and beautiful and has its own internal aesthetic. 
but some circles need to be closed to be fully realized. Now, closing a circle is not a bad thing. Closing a circle is a right thing to do. And the older you get, the more circles you want to close and recognize and honor and own. Now, people have told me in the past, I'm a little odd, a little strange, a little disconnected because of many things. But here's one small thing. I have a habit of considering everyone I meet my friend by default. If we know each other, you're my friend. There are no conditions. We know, you know, we are known together. We are friends. Now, some people I know think that you have to meet in person once a week to be real friends, or once a year, or once every decade to remain friends, to renew the sacred covenant. But in that case, I'm not this way. I can meet you one time, now and forever. In my mind, at least, we are always friends. Even if we argue, if we depart, we never see each other again physically. Are we friends? Of course, it's done. With one exception. When people sit there and tell me, I want to be your friend, somehow it just puts me off. It it pushes me slightly over the edge because to me it seems so nonsensical. It's like saying, don't forget to breathe. Is it me or is it you? Isn't that an odd turn of phrase to formally say, I would like to be your friend? I mean, it's like they're asking for an application or something to see if it will be voted up positively. I don't really understand it. Friendships just kind of naturally happen. They don't even need a label. Making the process of friendship non-transparent is sort of important. So if you formally ask me to be your friend, then I can't. Because you asked me and you made it awkward. Now, true friendships do not take advantage of each other. Friendship is not a two-way street but rather a river where you meet and think in the same stream. There are no prices or values placed against a friendship, for a friendship should be easy and unburdened by ritual or calendar or the asking. Another side point, I'm not big on holidays and cards and gift-giving at certain times and certain moments. Every day is my birthday. Every day is my wedding anniversary. Every day is the 4th of July. I don't need a greeting card company or a soda company to come up and tell me where and why and how I need to remember someone. This sort of forced gift giving is the worst kind of intention on the planet because it is, by means and galley way, unwarranted and disingenuous. Here's a Father's Day card. I hate you. Now go away. See you next year. Now, on a more serious closing note, I was recently reminded of what renewing the covenant really means in the real house of us in the guise embodiment of civil rights leader and living human meme legend, Representative John Lewis. John was one of the big six in the 1960s civil rights movement. He was involved in Freedom Rides, the March on Washington, and his head was cracked open by police and he nearly lost his life during the first minutes of the march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama, while crossing the Edmund Pettus Bridge on March 7, 1965. And that day came to infamy in history as Bloody Sunday. 
In a recent takeover of the House of Representatives to earn a vote on gun violence, John Lewis and other members of his caucus staged a sit-in in the well of the House. Together they kneeled. Together they prayed. Together they sat. Together they blocked all Republican funny business. Now, some Republicans, believe it or not, in 2016 threatened John Lewis and his team with violence over their nonviolent sit-in. We have clubs. We will beat you up. We have guns. And John Lewis quietly replied to them in the year 2016, echoing the ghosts of Bloody Sunday in 1965, and said, while clasping the hands of his fellow Democrats, who had formed a human circle with him, a chain that would not be broken, We will not fight you. We will not hurt you. But we will not be moved. And that, my new friend, is how you renew the covenant. You take a stand. You believe in something beyond yourself. You rise up with eyes of the nation on you, and you whisper so loud, everyone can hear you. Do with me as you wish, but I shall not be moved. John Lewis is 76 years old, and like my mentor Howard Stein, we will miss him so much when he's gone, and we will all have to work harder to fill the hole he leaves behind. But John Lewis shall always remain within us. Every time we stand up against the dark forces of hatred and cruelty, and we simply say, like my friend, John Lewis, who stood here before me, I too shall not be moved. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.